Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, the listener. Thank you, Matt Zaglin, Kelly Cook, Jeff Wilkes, and everybody. Welcome our brand new patron, Olivia. Yay. Rodrigo, baby. Hey, thank you, Olivia, for supporting us. On this episode of DTNS, Kevin Pereira talks about using tools to create songs and realistic head and lip movement for his AI for Humans show. Plus, Huawei and Apple launch phones head-to-head -head in China, and why AirPods 4 are surprisingly good at active noise cancellation. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, September 20th, 2024. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. From Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. And joining us, the host of AI for Humans show, Kevin Pereira. Welcome, Kevin. Hello. Hello. Hey. Thank you for that appropriate amount of excitement. Coming from Hot Dog <laughs> City directly. Hey. Hey. Yeah, so what's going on with Hot Dog City, by the way? Hot Dog City uh, was an accidental creation that happened on the AI for Humans podcast, and it's gotten out of control. It's a little out of hand. And I think later we're going to show off an AI tool that let me go from a voice memo to a full Broadway musical about <laughs> said city of dog in less than a minute. And I, I'm, my mind is still a little blown by it. Yeah. And they say AI is overhyped. Please uh, stick around, folks. We are going to bust that fun for you. <laughs> Uh, first of all, Anchor is recalling three models of MagSafe iPhone batteries. Uh, they were all made between January 3rd and September 17th. So if yours is older, you don't have to worry. But there is a fire risk. So if you've got a new one, you might want to check on that. Let's start with the rest of the quick hits. Microsoft and Constellation Energy have announced a deal that, pending regulatory approval, would reopen the Three Mile Island power plant in Pennsylvania. Microsoft would buy all 837 megawatts of energy generation for 20 years, starting in 2028. The energy would go into the local grid, not directly to Microsoft, and would be enough to power approximately 800,000 homes. However, because Microsoft would be paying for the energy, it would also be able to claim emissions-free credits for its data center energy use. Aha. And this is not the only unit that melted. This is not, not the unit. <laughs> there, there were units that melted down back in 1979, and this is not one of them. This is unit one. Totally different. This was only shut down in 2019 for economic reasons. This is the you juice that goes into anchor batteries, right? <laughs> Not anymore. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, you may remember back in July that a group protesting AI accessed Disney Corporation's internal Slack and leaked more than a terabyte of company data online, including computer code and details about unreleased projects. Well, Wall Street Journal found out that Disney CFO Hugh Johnston sent an internal memo this week saying that the company would be moving off Slack later this year. In replacement, Disney is using, quote, streamlined enterprise-wide collaboration tools and, quote, more integrated tools and platforms, also known as not Slack. You can now run Windows on iOS. Mind blown, right? Okay, not... Exactly. But you can get an app called Windows App Mobile on iOS, macOS, in public preview on Android, and also in a browser. The new Windows app replaces Microsoft Remote Desktop. So Windows app includes a customizable home screen, multi-monitor support, USB redirection so you can use local devices like a webcam or a storage device or your printer. It can also access Windows machines with a remote desktop access turned on and cloud-hosted machines in Windows 365 and Microsoft DevBox systems. It can also handle remotely hosted apps provided by work or school but importantly, can't be used with consumer accounts. Ah, too bad. I was going to try it out today. Uh, Y'all remember Monument Valley, that little puzzle game? It's like yeah. very, very zen, very chill. Uh, Netflix is bringing that to its games library, including a new version, Monument Valley 3. Uh, so the first Monument Valley is available through Netflix right now. Monument Valley 2 coming October 29th. And those were games that you could already get outside of Netflix's system, but now you can get them by just logging in with your Netflix account. And you don't have to pay. The new Monument Valley 3, which adds sailing, apparently, arrives on December 10th, exclusive to Netflix users. Netflix Gaming lets any Netflix subscriber play its games for free in long as long as you're a paid-up Netflix subscriber. You just download the app and log in with your Netflix account. 
T-Mobile, Ericsson, and Nokia are all working with NVIDIA on something called AI RAN, R-A-N. The RAN stands for Radio Access Network. The idea is to use algorithms to determine optimal network adjustments and predict real-time capacity, hopefully making them faster. T-Mobile will be the first carrier to test the system, and that will help average consumers, obviously, but it's a bigger deal for companies who also want to have AI-powered applications that use mobile data at very high rates. The idea is that AI RAN can let carriers offer AI as a service or AI AAS to enterprise customers in areas like Robotics, uh, autonomous driving, mixed reality. It's Apple product rains from your post office day. Uh, has anybody got any uh, Apple products delivered yet to their house? Mine haven't showed up. I've got an iPhone coming. Uh, mine uh, are promised n- to be delivered, I think, Q25 sometime, maybe around the same time they put <laughs> Apple yep. intelligence into the device. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't actually order anything, so no, nothing's coming today. Nothing's coming. But, uh, um, but, but yeah, we've got know. new new iPhones, AirPods 4, Apple Watch Series 10, all shipping today. And if you're in China, Huawei Mate XT. They're like really high-end, very pretty, well-engineered, foldable phone. Uh, that is even more expensive than the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Quite a, iPhone, quite a bit more. Yeah. Uh, the iPhone 16 Pro Max starts at $1,199. The Mate XT starts at the equivalent of $2,800. Uh, and CNBC was looking at resale prices. The lowest resale in China of the iPhone 16 Pro Max, which is the most expensive iPhone, was 10,000 yuan. The lowest Mate XT resale was 19,000 yuan. Now, the other thing going on here is that there is still demand for the iPhone. There are lines at stores in China today, reportedly, uh, to to get that iPhone 16. There are not lines to buy the Huawei Mate XT, and that's because they just sent everyone home and said, look, if we didn't confirm your pre-order, you're not getting one today. Uh, Supposedly, pre-orders for the Mate XT passed 6.5 million, which would be more than double, well, Less than double, but almost double the 3.9 million foldables that shipped worldwide in Q2. So that's it's quite a lot of people signed up. You don't have to spend any money to sign up. So probably a lot more people signed up than will actually pull the trigger on it. Uh, but there's also supply chain analysts saying that Huawei's having a hard time getting the parts made for these. There's a lot of restrictions on what parts can be imported into China. A lot of restrictions on the machines that make parts uh, coming to China. Uh Isaiah Research's Lori Chang notes that there are low yields for the panel, the cover glass, and the hinges. So Huawei may just not be able to make these fast enough. Uh, But if you are trying to figure out what's going to happen with Apple in China, because that is one of the markets they have to do well in to continue to do well internationally, um, it's going to be uh, interesting to see if they can make up some ground on Huawei, which sees the lead in China, uh, because Huawei can't ship enough of these devices. Well, and doesn't this sort of harken back to the days of, you know, lions outside of Apple stores? Yeah. You know, Apple doesn't really do that anymore. Um, You know, to to have Huawei have a product and a very expensive product, um, but, you know, to, you know, it's it's, um, surprising and delighting uh, enough people that really, really want this um, who have (laughs) pre-ordered, give me our device. Um, This feels very, okay, a little bit of a sea change. I want to play with one. I don't know if anyone here... With the Mate XT? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no price too heavy for me to feel like I'm unfurling an Outback Steakhouse menu just to play Angry Birds. (laughs) Like, how luxurious would that be? Yeah, it's yeah. the it's the trifle thing that gets you. Yeah. Right? Z, they yeah. call it the Z. It's just the something Z that looks new, like a Z. To be honest, like that's it. Just it would it feels new. It's an exciting new form factor. I know that there were issues with foldables in the past. Um, obviously, they're difficult to make, difficult to engineer, but they've got enough. Uh, experience under their belt that I think this one's going to be good. But I I think it is interesting that we're not talking about any lines whatsoever, really outside of Apple stores, maybe in a a few select markets because people like that stuff. But this was supposed to be an iPhone super cycle. This was uh, like, which is like the El Nino of technology, I guess. This was supposed to be a massive year that everybody who was sitting on the bench was going to come out for the iPhone 16. I'm not upgrading. I've got a 14 and I'm 
fine with it for now. And I am an AI fanboy, yeah. admittedly. And even those features aren't getting me to move. Yeah, I, I have an iPhone 14 as well. And I was not going to upgrade until I realized that I was going to need to try out Apple Intelligence <laughs> right. in order to do this show. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have. Yeah. The, and and I think a, a lot of consumers are, are going to be in that same boat. Uh, it is, it's the S cycle of the iPhone 16, right? Uh, it, it's usually the, the off cycle uh, where you get the big hardware improvements. So maybe maybe iPhone 17 is the one that's going to have the whistles and bells. I don't think it's going to be a foldable, though, uh, by all accounts. Well, we do have other products besides the iPhone shipping, right, Sarah? Indeed. Uh, yeah, so we talked a, like, briefly about AirPods. Um, and Apple's vice president of hardware engineering, Kate Bergeron, told Engadget's Billy Steele, um, it, it, great interview, by the way, and that's in our show notes, that Apple's bundling of headphones with the early iPods and iPhones has helped Apple build up research about how headphones work with people's ear shapes. Now, this piqued my interest because I have always had the weird ears where these old wired earbuds that Apple gave me, I have... Yeah, I don't even know how many of these I have, uh, are fine and work in a pinch, but never actually fit my ears or worked that well. So tackling active noise cancellation started uh, with a small team in lockdown. Apple says this was during 2020. You know, what else are they going to do? Uh, expanded in 2021. <laughs> <laughs> then Apple worked on improving the algorithm to compensate for extra noise in the AirPods more open design. This is this is the something that a lot of people wondered about the AirPods for. The new AirPods is, you know, if you don't have, you know, kind of that that in-ear kind of gel capability, is this going to work? This improves the physical shape uh, fit of the earbuds and that obviously helps, but the algorithm seems to be the biggest key point of this. It adapts in real time as you as a user move your head around. Uh, you have exterior sound changes, you know, maybe, a, um, you know, I don't know, somebody beeps a car near you. You know, what, what happens in that moment? The algorithms change the noise cancellation, but they also change the EQ. So they optimize sound quality or at least are designed to. Uh, that's all done on the H2 chip in these new earbuds. Yeah, these are these are impressive by all accounts. It's enough that I, I kind of want to go grab some just to try them out, and then I don't know, maybe I'll just return them or something. But I I want to I want to experience for myself how this works because what the reviewers are saying is, uh, yes, you don't have the silicone tips, so they don't seal in your ear, and they don't feel like they're working the way the AirPods Pro do when you first turn on active noise cancellation because it doesn't shut out the world. But as soon as you play audio you realize that it really is. So it's mm. adapting when the audio plays to kind of cancel out the noise and keep that audio sounding good. And I, I mean, as somebody who I, you know, I, I wear earplugs when I sleep at night. I mean, you know, plugging the ear is not a problem for me. A lot of people do have a problem with that though. So Kevin, where are you yeah, on this? Some people get that airplane claustrophobic, almost compression effect with active noise canceling because of the seal. Yeah, I, right. I'm assuming there's a microphone in the, uh, the in the buds themselves that's listening yep. for the audio leak, not just the environment itself, but as you're playing something, it is taking that leaked reverberated audio, feeding that back in and canceling it. Um, not to, well, maybe somewhat related, AirPods Pro. I am a, a pro user. The hearing aid thing, very, very cool for yeah, yeah. accessibility, getting that price point down. Like that is a massive industry and in and of itself, a really big improvement, but I'm, struggling now to understand why we, anybody would get the pro model of this year's AirPods versus these four, because it seems like they moved all of the important, interesting features from the pro hearing aid aside into that model. It just seemed like a very, like an un-Apple thing to do. Yeah. The, the only thing I could figure is if you just don't want that open air situation at all right you when you have your airpods pro in you like the world being shut out even sure. when you didn't you're not playing any music because the airpods 4 are not going to do that um but otherwise you're right like and and maybe the sound of the airpods pro will end up being you know measurably better somehow i guess that's the i'm i'm, I'm stretching those are the only two things yeah. In addition to the to the uh, hearing aid technology that you mentioned, that I I can see are worth paying for the AirPods Pro over the AirPods Four. 
And then they yeah, added I mean, a, a U- sorry, a, Sarah. Uh, yeah, go. No, the, the Wi-Fi latency over cloud streaming is always so choice. Um, USB-C plug to the max and changing the colorway, but still charging 500 some odd dollars. I mean, not really, a question just, there. I'm they, just complaining. I'm just an just old man added, shaking a fist They just added new colors to the max. That, that's what, but they're the same they price? Am yeah. I missing something? I'm just, I don't, I'm, I love Apple. I am in the Apple ecosystem. I also have Windows devices. I just, that, everything that's coming out this week, I just, I don't, I'm wondering if, have I just aged out of the demo or are they not making products? I mean, they're just, they're, I know they're not making products that are compelling to me with this cycle right now. It just seems like odd choice after odd These choice. These are refrigerators now. Right. That's the problem. Right. You don't you don't get excited when Samsung or LG come out with a new dishwasher or refrigerator. You go buy. You don't one know you me, Tom. <laughs> you don't okay. know me. I love Most it. I'm at the best buy. Other than Kevin. Don't I'm get knocking on the window to see the dairy through the door. Have you seen that tech yet? <laughs> it's oh. crazy. I, mean, I, I do this at Lowe's at my, at, <laughs> yeah. at my nearby Lowe's. It's it's actually it's very meditative to me. But but yeah, no. But to go back to. You know what the you know, the point of this conversation is that Apple has, especially in this end gadget article, been laying laying down. We have been thinking about how this was uh, not working for all ear types for a long time. Right. You know they started bundling earbuds with iPhones in 2007. So you know we've had some time. Like you used to just get them, and I remember being like, well, it always looks like this in my purse. And Ta- that a tangled sucks. mess, a tangled mess. Always like, wouldn't it be nice if I had wireless earbuds? But I always was worried about that because I feel like I have weird ears. They always just didn't fit very well in my ears. And, you know, they'd fall out. I'm constantly like, you know, putting putting the left or the right ear um, earbud back in and thinking if this was wireless, they would just roll out into the street all the time. I mean, this is, you know, it's may- it's mayhem. Um, now, with the AirPods, which I'm actually using right now for the show, I don't always, every day, but I, I am today, um, they, they are secure. But, again, these are the AirPods Pro. You know, they do have those gel inserts. And I think that that's really, really important for somebody like me because otherwise they'll just yeah. fall out of your ear. I don't care how good also, the audio is. If I lose them, that's not good. It'll on, sound on so end, good think, as you watch them fall down that sewer. <laughs> think of them. Yeah, yeah. You can use spatial, fine mind to know where in audio. the sewer they yeah. are. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I do think that it is it is interesting that Apple is saying, oh, we've we've gathered all this data on how people use headphones because we have been giving them headphones for so long with iPods even before the iPhones. But also, I imagine headphone companies are like, yeah, we do too. Because we've been doing headphones for our entire existence because we're a headphone company. So, you know, yeah. somebody somebody at Bose probably has something to say about this. Yeah. Uh, folks, if you want to hear us talk about something on the show, there's an easy way to submit a story or a segment idea. Just go to our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. All right, Kevin, we last spoke to you here on DTNS in January, and you were talking about how you've been producing your show, AI for Humans, using a variety of generative AI tools. All right, so that was, uh, math is hard, nine months ago. Yeah. Have but in those the, tools changed? In the AI and, yeah, hype like, what cycle, are we doing? Sarah, oh, I was a wee little <laughs> lad when we last discussed AI. I mean, three, what a, three weeks means a lot. In this, what a in sad this little nascent that. technology it was then. But we believed in right, it. We yeah. thought it could get better. And lo and behold, it has. Yeah. Lots of exciting new technology. Um, yeah. I, so, so, so walk us through, like, how do you, how, how do you use the tools to produce your show and how has that changed? Yeah. So oddly enough, we're not using a lot of AI to write the show. We use large language models sometimes to role play with characters that we bring on the show, but the uh, graphical and audio creative tools that we use to bring the characters to life, that has changed a ton. There are several companies now that have really good generative video. It was not too long ago, probably back in January, where I think the benchmark was Will Smith shoveling spaghetti into his face and the Mm -hmm. fork sort of blends into his own jaw. 
Now you can absolutely <laughs> get Will with mouthful of Sketty as Gordon Ramsay is yelling at him in a realistic looking kitchen and you have camera control. So there's a lot of companies that are competing with OpenAI. They had their big Sora video model, which looked really cool. You can get your hands on these tools today. And one that I use almost every day is by Runway. And they just announced uh, Gen 3. And there's a couple cool tools in this. One is a, a, like, a, um, like a turbo model, where if you feed it an image, you can see I want this frame to be the beginning frame of a 10 second clip or the last frame and give it a little mm. description, including camera control, lighting elements, whatever you'd like. And it will, I mean, at the snap of a finger, it will generate a draft quality video for you. And then you can upgrade that quality. And how long did, can it draft? How, how many seconds does it go in these days? Um, you can do five to 10 second samples um, with that model. And if you use the regular model, you can click the extend option and you can drag that out to 30 second clips oh, that's pretty of good. the same scene. And the yeah. coherence, meaning the uh, the way the objects stay the same and the physics of things within a scene. Fire, the fork not rain. blending into the mouth. That's yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah. The fork yeah. detection is, un <laughs> is unmatched. Um, and there's a bunch of models. There's other companies that have competing products, but Runway just sort of works and I have credits there, so I use it all the time. They also have a video style transfer tool now. So you can feed it, uh, I think, up to a minute of source video and say, make this look like it's claymation. Make it look like it's made mm. out of yarn. Um, add a, a, a layer of, I don't know, ketchup or mustard splattering into the people <laughs> of this scene and it will do it with believable physics. Whatever you're into, I'm not here to judge. I'm just saying mm -hmm. the tools are amazing mm -hmm. and they work no, quick and they cost stuff. pennies. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like the kind of thing you'd run into in Hot Dog City. You know, funny you should mention that, uh, Tom. I've been I've been spending some time broad dogging in the city, and I can tell you that <laughs> it. Ins I was actually inspired to do more with Hot Dog City uh, because of a new tool that Suno just released. It's in beta. It's called Song Cover. Uh, they don't sponsor me. This is hashtag not an ad. I wish they did. Um, this is now me pleading for a sponsorship. Let me take a second. Uh, <laughs> Suno is a AI powered music creation uh, service. Yeah. You can, yeah, yeah I, we've we, talked about Suno. We've talked about yeah, them. Yeah, Suno, Udio, there's a few of those out yeah. there. Yeah. So Suno now lets you upload a clip and remix it, and you can change the style dramatically. And so, uh, well, I have a, a little sample of a tutorial that I'm releasing on Monday on the tool if y'all would like to take a trip to Hot Dog City. Please do. Hot Dog City. Hot Dog City. Hot Dog Dog City. Dog City. All right. <laughs> so, so, so you you sang that much and got that entire chorus. That's back. what that's, that's what happened. There is a full musical, <laughs> multiple styles. There's a rock opera. There's <laughs> there's a whole bunch of different versions. I literally took a voice memo with my dog snarling at me in the background <laughs> and sang Hot Dog City and a whole thing and did the whole musical, put it into Suno, hit a button, and less than a minute later, out came stuff like that. Trumpet fanfares, wow. massive choirs. So where do you go banging. next? To Broadway or, you know, where do you take Hot Dog City? Bratwurst Metropolis. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, we're Kirkland Signature <laughs> series of shows. I, I, I was honestly blown away by this. I love music tools. I love to experiment with them. I love to play with them. That genuinely was less than a minute of going from voice memo to musical. And you can bang on pots and pans and get a full death metal drum solo. You can hum and get guitars out of it. If you take a second in a garage band or something, you can beatbox or approximate the music that you want and then sing your lyrics on top of that feed it into Suno and say that you want to cover and tell it what you want your vocals to sound like. Do you want harmonies? Do you want synths? Do you want it to be 1980s, et cetera? And the results are really, really transformative. Apparently that's, so. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, I, I've loved playing around with just like describing a song and having it make, you know, a, a pop song. And the fact that, that we're able to like throw even more at it is pretty, pretty yeah. inspiring. Yeah. Is the word and I'm going to use. Yeah. If you look out on the horizon of these technologies, the UDO, I believe, and, and Suno for sure, they're diffusion based models and not to get into the weeds of the tech. But if you look at the types of things you can do with image models, like in painting, for example, where you can select an object within a scene and say, here's how I want it changed or out painting the Adobe extend feature where you can have it hallucinate what's on the borders. 
these types of things can also apply to audio generation because they're based roughly on the same core technology. So in the very near future with either of these tools, you'll be able to sketch a song, go from you know voice memo to full song, and then paint on the portion of the song and give it granular changes. Oh, wow. Change yeah. the entire style. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do, do those types of manipulations. You can even do seed locking, the generation locking, this... You can lock the style of it. So I can say, I like the singer's voice, but I want brass in the background. So you can lock that singer and go change it. So it's just creativity, I really think, is getting democratized with these tools. I know that there's there's a whole other giant discussion about whether these tools should exist. The original sin of the training data, that's not the point of what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, creativity is going to be democratized pretty heavily. And if you can have an idea, the ability to get to that idea quicker... It's it's I've, I've I've never existed in a time like it, quite honestly. I mean, so so for anybody who says, all right, hot dog city, how fun, you know, I is that the not tonality everybody... they're saying that with Sarah? I feel like, um, <laughs> but that's okay. So. Let's roll with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really fun. Um, but um, for anybody who's like, all right, but I I don't know. I I work in different capacities. You know, it, it do you feel like you have found AI to help you do more? I don't know, everyday mundane tasks. 100%, 100%. I am not a lawyer by any stretch. I have drafted multiple legal agreements that got zero redlining from actual accomplished Hmm. lawyers who have said, oh yeah, that agreement's good, let's send that out on behalf of companies I've been consulting with, et cetera. I've even been coding. I have no business writing software code. I have none, but there's a bunch of new, uh, new, there's a bunch of new tools that let you actually just describe what you want in natural language. Everybody is saying that the future coding language is going to just be a a natural one, whatever language you speak. Just explain what you want and it puts out the code. Correct, and it's getting there. Um, There's a new app called Cursor that I've been using a lot and you can plug it into various language models and say explicitly, I want an application that does X, Y, and Z. I want it to look like an Apple designer built it. I want it running on Replit or on this other platform or what, just running locally. It works for game design. It works for, uh, you know, building databases. And there's a thing called a, 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 I'm sure the audience is aware, it's called an API. It's the language with which software talks to other software. Well, yeah. if a brand new something comes out, you can copy and paste the documentation for that something, feed it into cursor or a large language model and say, learn this in the next 30 milliseconds, Mm -hmm. and now write me an app that does whatever you want with it. And it's shockingly good. And in fact, you can run the app and any errors that pop up on the screen, you can grab a screenshot of it, feed that back into the AI and say, fix this up for me. Fix that. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. So I would say every industry is getting touched by this. Um, If you have a job where you're manipulating spreadsheets, guess what? You can do it a lot faster. If you are a coder, if you're an author, if you're a graphic artist, if you're whatever the pursuit is, there's probably a way right now that you can infuse AI into the job, but don't make the mistake of thinking that means it does it all for you. You you want a human in the loop that knows what they're doing to make sure the output yeah. is quality. Yeah, we've talked on, uh, on DTNS quite a bit about um, how much it uh, it could help our jobs, but at the same time to be second, you know, uh, not second guessing, but just like double checking, triple checking everything sometimes oh. ends up being as time consuming, if not more. Yeah, that's why we don't do it, it on our show. Yeah, we just don't. We trust the AI blindly. So I would just take whatever output and say it. <laughs> Facts, figures, doesn't matter. No yeah, one yeah. no one checks anymore. Yeah, if somebody so. gets mad, it was the yeah. AI. 100%. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, well, AI Kevin, goat. <laughs> the scapegoat, yes, so, something like Hot Dog City. That's probably where it lives. Uh, Kevin, this was this was uh, very very illuminating. Thank you so much uh, for being with us and talking through some of this stuff. Um, your show is awesome. Thank you guys you. have a lot of fun on the show. Um, I'm a big fan. Uh, let folks know where they can keep up with you. Thank you for that, Sarah. Thank you for choosing illuminating as the adjective. I didn't know where that sentence was going to land, and I appreciate it. I don't deserve it. <laughs> AIforhumans.show is our main website. You can go there. You can subscribe. We got a newsletter now, um, which is crazy in this day and age. But, you know, 
You can grab the podcast. Oh, no, we do. It's, it's the new normal. Everybody the loves new norm. the newsletter now. It's the new mm-hmm. norm. Our newsletter went out for milk and cigarettes like three times, but this time we're going to be consistent with it. Once a week, every Tuesday, sign up. And then Monday, Hot Dog City hits. It's a four-minute tutorial on how to go from voice memo all the way to Broadway musical. That's fantastic. Uh, folks, go check that out. Uh, also, reminder, new top fives drop on our YouTube channel, our Instagram and TikTok every Friday. Uh, and you asked for this, so don't blame me. I'm counting down my top five shoes, the top five pairs of shoes I wear. Uh, these are my recommendations. If you're looking for new shoes, this is the week for you. Uh, catch it at Daily Tech News Show on TikTok, DTNS Picks, DTNS PIX on Instagram and YouTube.com slash Daily Tech News Show. And if you're a patron, stick around. Good Day Internet starts right after DTNS uh, and it's Friday. So we're going to do a round of Would You Rather? Uh, a seafood or nut allergy, which would you rather have, for example? Could be could be one of the uh, things we debate. Stick around and find out. Just a reminder, you can catch our show live. We are live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We hope you all have a real nice weekend. We're back on Monday talking about making your own subtitles and how to do it with Nate Langston joining us. This week's episodes of Daily Tech News Show were created by the following people. Host, producer, and writer, Tom Merritt. Host, producer, and writer, Sarah Lane. Executive producer and booker, Roger Chang. Producer, writer, and co-host, Rob Dunwood. Video producer, Joe Kuntz. Producer at large, Anthony Lemos. Spanish language host, writer, and producer, Dan Campos. Science correspondent, Dr. Nikki Ackermans. Our social media producer and moderator, Zoe Detterding. Our mods, Beatmaster, W. Scott S1, BioCal, Captain Kipper, Steve Guadarrama, Paul Reese, Matthew J. Steve a.k.a. Gadget Virtuoso, and J.D. Galloway. Mod and video hosting by Dan Christensen. Music and art provided by Martin Bell, Dan Luters, Mustafa A., Acast, and Len Peralta. Acast ad support from Tatiana Matias. Patreon support from Tom McNeil. Contributors for this week's shows included Chris Ashley, Scott Johnson, and Allison Sheridan. Our guest this week was Kevin Pereira. And thanks to all the patrons who make the show possible. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>